Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Roland DeBreeze, and along with my broadcast partner, Derek Slate, we are streaming live on WDSU television here from Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. You can find us also Like a WDSU good neighbor, WDSU State Farm is there. Log on to statefarm.com for an And click on the YouTube icon in the lower right. Today, the Delaware State University Hornets take on the visiting Howard University Bison. The Hornets are 3-5 and five overall and 3-2 and two with the MEAC. And they are coming off a 30-7 to seven loss to Hampton in a game where the Hornets simply imploded into the second half. The Howard University Bison are 3-5 and five overall and 2-3 and three in the MEAC and bring a two-game win streak into today's contest. The Bison are coming off a 28-14 to 14 homecoming victory over Morgan State last Saturday. The Hornets and Bison are meeting for the 56th consecutive year and 70th time overall, making it Delaware State's oldest rivalry. Howard won last year's meeting 41-34 to, to snap a five-game DSU win streak in the series. The Hornets led by 21 points early in the third quarter, but was outscored 38-10 to the rest of the way in a 41-34 loss to the Bison in the 2012 meeting in Washington, D.C. The last time the teams met at Alumni Stadium, Delaware State scored the winning touchdown with 218 left to play in a 39-36 victory in 2011. Rayford Ray Petty enters his second campaign as head football coach of the Howard University Bison. The highly respected Petty served as head coach of the Bison from 2002 to 2006. Prior to Howard, Petty served as defensive coordinator at both Delaware State and Norfolk State. He spent four seasons here with the Hornets. Prior to coaching at DSU, Petty posted a 25-30 and 30 record as the head coach of Howard from 2002 to 2006. When we come back, we're going to go to our newest member of our broadcast team, as Byron Dixon will have our weather, his thoughts on today's matchup, and also the injury matchup. As you look at the weather today, everyone, it'll be a high of about 70 degrees. As you can see behind us, we have wind. So that will be something to pay attention to in the passing game as well in the special teams aspect as teams kick field goals and punt the ball. When we look at the Howard Bisons, we look at Damon Gresham Chisholm. The 2012 MEAC Defensive Rookie of the Year and Rookie of the Year had 41 tackles, 5 sacks, 18 for loss. As well as Julian David, the defensive back who was a senior. He had 108 tackles last year and was all MEAC preseason. As you look at the DSU Hornets, it starts and ends with the quarterback, Corey Murphy. Corey Murphy is a senior with three games remaining. It will be important for him to get off to a great start in his collegiate career very well. And when Corey Murphy is dropping back to throw for Milton extra. Williams, Milton Williams has been a pleasant surprise in the passing game, putting up big numbers and leading in a lot of categories in the MEAC. As we move forward on the injury front, both teams are predominantly healthy, and it will be few shifts on the offensive line with the young offensive line, which will be something to look forward to. Hopefully, it will be a high-scoring game. The last few games between the Hornets and the Bisons have been very high-scoring, including last year's shootout. With that being said, I'll send it back to you, Roland. Thank you. Thanks, Byron, and welcome aboard. It's glad to have you here as a broadcast partner with us. Well, Derek, it's another beautiful Saturday afternoon, ready for a little football here against the Howard University Bison. What's the keys to today's game? I think the first thing, the most important thing, is to run the ball more effectively. They're 3-0 and when they have more rushing yards than their opponent, and they're 0-5 and when they don't have more rushing yards than their opponent. So that's a big emphasis for the team this game. Also, limit turnovers. They had four turnovers last week, three of them by Corey Murphy, who was subsequently benched. And if he can manage the game better, they'll probably win this game. Uh, finally, they got to control time of possession. That's one of Kermit Blunt's biggest reasons for success every single time we talk to them is control the time of clock, get the defense some rest, keep the offense on the field, and make the other defense make a lot of plays during the game. And I think those are the three keys to the game for this week. All right. Well, the captains are meeting here at uh, midfield, getting ready for the uh, coin toss. And we are, uh, band is still on the field, playing some entertaining entertainment music for us as we get ready for today's kickoff. What do you have for our impact players today, Derek? I think this time we switched it up a little bit. Instead of impact player, it's going to be the whole entire offensive line has to do a better job. They gave up six sacks last week and four sacks in the fourth quarter when they were trying to make a comeback. 
They've given up 19 sacks so far in just five games in the MEAC conference, which is second worst. Defensively, it's going to be uh, KJ. We still haven't found a way to pronounce his name. KJ has talked. We had an interview with him. He wants to be able to be very physical up front to stop Anthony Pilgrim in that running game. Pilgrim, rookie of the week last week, two straight 100-yard rushing games. And also their quarterback can get out and run. They use a lot of different people and uh, a lot of different runners. They love to play physical. They have over 300 rushing attempts so far this season to only 200, around 200 passing attempts. So a run-heavy team, kind of a rarity in the college football game today. But this is the second week in a row they faced a tough running team. Of course, Hampton last week, they gave up over 220 yards on the ground. If they want to win, they're going to have to stop the run. Thanks, Derek. Well, coin flip has been completed. Howard has won the, won the toss. We get ready for this football matchup. Howard University has taken the field at this time. Delaware State has gathered in the west end zone, getting ready to take the field. Howard University will receive on the east side of the end zone. Beautiful day as Byron talked about earlier. Uh, no chance of rain. Everybody's really excited about this football game. They're really trying to rebound from an unfortunate loss against Hampton last week where they were just imploded simply in the second half. They had led that or they never led the game but it was 10 to 7 at halftime and led up a 79-yard run to start off the second half. And after that, it just went downhill afterwards. So this is a big matchup for Delaware State as they try to stay in for a chance at the MEAC championship. Yeah, they're ranked fourth, had a chance of second uh, place, sole possession. But like you said, they imploded in the second half. Expect a lot of yards and by both teams. These Both teams love to play through the air against each other even though Howard's more of a running team, but expect both teams to really try their best to move up and down the field. Both of them struggling in points. Howard fourth with 23 points, and Delaware State is dead last with only 12 points. So uh, Delaware State is definitely going to have to keep up. Corey Murphy's going to have to throw the ball well, but they're going to have to have a balance running the ball. They have a banged up offensive line. We just we went down to talk to the offensive line coach and had to scratch off three offensive line players. So it's a lot of injuries up front and a very young offensive line up front to begin with. So it's going to be a tough, tough game for Delaware State, but they have to convert when they get near the red zone. No turnovers. They have to. A lot of times the turnovers happen around a 30. It's something we've talked about. They move the ball around a 30, but just before they get to the red zone, you'll see an interception or a fumble or some penalties move them out of scoring position. Well, Rodney Tyson and Tabron Resby are dropped back deep to receive the kick for the Bison. And Mitchell Ward's getting ready to put this ball into play at the 35. Band has left the field and they're gathered in a western west end zone. As Mitchell Ward gets ready to start this ball game. Here we go, Mitchell Ward hits it into the ground, takes a bounce. Rodney Tyson's got it at the 15, he's hit at the 20, stays on his feet over the 22. Now he's running to the far sideline, he's pushed out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Good job by Willie Burton not giving him the edge. It seemed like he would have had a lot more yards, but Willie Burton, who was out of position a little bit, ran extremely hard sideline to sideline and forced him out of bounds. Well, Craig McGee brings out the Bison, start first and 10 at their 25. And uh, as they mentioned earlier, Derek and Byron both saying they're going to try to run this football at us. So we'll see how the Hornets can respond to this. They start off with the, the freshman, Anthony Filia, in the backfield. He moves to the right of McGee. Wide receiver in motion coming to the right. They hand it off to Phil Yaw. He is over the 25 to 30. 
up over the 30 and down at the 36 yard line with a pickup of about 11. So it'll be a first down from the 36 yard line is a nice 11 yard pickup by Anthony Filio. They moved Jonathan Booker over to try to take the corner away from that play and allowed him to get to the edge for a first down. McGee drops back, puts it off into the left flat. He's got a man caught and out of bounds at the 48-yard line of the Delaware State Hornets. He hit Clayton Gidron with a nice pickup. First and 10 for the Bison at the Delaware State 47. McGee has it, hands it off to Philia. Philia dancing in the backfield, but he's going to lose two as he's brought back down at the 50. Good job by Corey Burns. Barnes seems like he was the first one to meet him, and then a swarm of Hornets brought him down. Loss of three, and it's going to be second down and 13. We have a man down on the field. A Delaware State Hornet is down at the 48 of Delaware State. Is Ernest Ajay. Not good. That's one of their best players left on his defense. They've already lost Devon Moore for the season with a torn ACL. And he you cannot lose Ajay on his defense. He is being helped off the field as Ajay is, is definitely in pain coming off the field. Remember a couple weeks ago against Norfolk State, he had 16 tackles, a career high at the time. This guy, to stop the running game, you need him on the field. So hopefully it's not a serious injury. Well, the Bison come out with three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Phil Yaw in the backfield on a second and 13 from the 50. Greg McGee sends Brandon Flanagan in motion. He drops back to pass. He has time. Over the middle, he's got a man. And is caught by Clayton Gidron down at the 34-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down. First down, Bison. So far, I'm surprised about the formation is how it is running. Normally, they run a lot of two tight end type sets, but right now they're spreading out Delaware State. Like we said, they go into a lot of shootouts against Delaware State. We tried to get the playoff, but we're going to have a, a legal procedure on the buys, and that's going to cost them five. Bring them back to the 37th. False start. So it'll be first and 15 from the Delaware State 38. Matthew Colvin comes split wide right, three receivers to the left, and Phil Yaw and McGee in the backfield. McGee looks, gives it off to Phil Yaw. He's up over to 35 to 30, hit at the 28 and dropped right up there. Phil Yaw off the right side for Howard. Pick up of about 10. He's going to be about five yards short of the first down. Bring up a second and long. They faked the screen on the left side and then ran a draw, had the defense completely full and out of position. Corey Scott had to make a tackle after a 10-yard game. Phil Yard again with the carry, and he's only going to pick up about one, maybe two yard. He's going to be dropped down at about the 26-yard line. Talk about Anthony Phil Yard. He was not expected to be a huge part of this offense, but due to injury, he was able to really prove himself during some of the MEAC conference games. Now they're going to move into a heavy right formation. And here comes Harris right out along the right side, but he is read well by Joe Boyd, and he's pushed out of bounds. No gain. We talked to the uh, sports department information guy for Howard. He really loves uh, Greg McGee. He regards him as the best quarterback in the MEAC. Had over 120 yards rushing last week in their victory. Well, here's a critical fourth down right now for the Bison. It's going to be about fourth and two. Howard leads the MEAC in first downs game so far, five games into the season. They may be trying to draw the Hornets off. He snapped the ball. Now we have a whistle. No play. Let's see what we've got here. 
We're waiting on a call. Flag on the play. False start on the offense, so that's going to back them up another five. It's going to be fourth and seven. This makes it even more interesting for them. If you're a coach right now, what do you do? Do you go for the long field goal, or would you try to convert this first down? It seems like they're going to go for it still. I think they're going for it again. Must not have too much confidence in their field goal kicker. So it would have been a 48-yard shot from there. Definitely some uh, distance to they it. They have struggled in the special teams game. When we talked to the sports information guy, talked about a couple of missed field goals in the last couple of weeks. All right, McGee getting pressure. He's rolling off to the left. He's still looking, looking. He's got a man. I don't know. I think he's going to be a little short of the first down. Let's see. I think it's a he first down. He got hit out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. I think he's going to be short. I think you're right. At first, I see the chain king kind of move like they were signaling first down, but he Delaware, was a little short. Delaware State has held, so it'll be first and the Bison turn it over on downs. It's going to be first and ten for the Delaware State Hornets. As they will take over at the 31 yard line. Howard's done a great job so far this season moving the ball, but their head coach has talked about how disappointed they are of leaving points on the board. There's another example. Well, Malcolm Williams lines up along with Corey Murphy as the quarterback. We're going to see it to Sia Obodo later on today, that is for sure. So Murphy back to pass. He's got a man, and that is Bo Cerevolo, and he is brought down at the 37-yard line. Check that. That was Robert King. It's going to bring up second and four at the 37-yard line, Delaware State. I would like to see the Hornets try to establish some type of a running game here. We talked about it during the pregame. They're 3-0 when they have more rushing yards than their opponent. Maury Murphy dropped the back. He's got Malik Golson for the first down. He's going to be brought down at about the 47-yard line. He was brought down by Devin Rollins on the tackle. Pass complete to Golson. First down, Hornets. Even though we talk about that running game, they have two of the best receivers in the Miyaku. Malik Golson and Milton Williams, one and two in receiving catches so far this season. That's 39th reception for Malik Golson. So it'll be first and 10 from the 47. Let's see what Murphy does with it. He drops back to pass. He's got time. He's got Milton Williams over the middle. It's caught at the 40. Murphy pass over the he's middle. He's brought down at the Williams. 39. It's going to be a first down, a pickup of about first 14. Down, first and 10 at the 39 of the Bison. And so far, Derek, they seem to be passing the ball quite regularly here on this opening drive. How it is in the bottom half in uh, passing defense, so maybe they're just going to exploit them. With the, they have great receivers on the outside, so maybe that's just what they're going to do for this game. Murphy Struggling with the running game last week. Murphy hands it off to Malcolm Williams. Gets a nice hole, a good run, pick up about four. Malcolm Williams going to be brought down to about the 35. Pick up of about three. We have nine minutes and 51 seconds here left in the first quarter. There's no score. We're just on the way here at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. Ball resting right on the 35-yard line. It'll be second and six from the 35. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Now Malcolm Williams sprints out to the left side as well. Delaware State moving right to left on your radio dial. Corey Murphy getting pressure. He moves forward, picks up about two. He's going to be brought down at around the 31. It's going to bring up about a third and five, Derek. I'm surprised Corey Murphy didn't check into a type, some type of screen. Third and about three yards. With Howard Bison running a zone, he had three receivers to only two corners on the right side. A screen would have probably given him a first down. I wonder if Corey Murphy has that luxury of making checks at the line of scrimmage. Third and three from the 32. Got Malcolm Williams in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the right. Now Williams spreads out to the left. Looks like some zone coverage. Murphy flips it out to Malcolm Williams, and he's not going to get anything. He was hit right at the Blue line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a half a yard, if that. It's going to bring up about fourth and three. 
that the Bison defense even had me confused. They went into a blitz, played man-to-man -man -man across the board, and, the and just a good closing tackle. Good job by Corey Murphy getting the ball out of his hands to a receiver. Just couldn't make a miss. Brings up fourth and three. The Hornets are going to go for it. Ball's rusting at, their, at the Bison 36-yard line. Just Corey Murphy's going to move up under center. He's got Malcolm Williams in the backfield. Drops back. Guts it over to Malik Golson, and it just went off his fingertips. Pass to Golson broken up. Now Delaware State's going to turn it over on downs. First down for the Howard Bison. So it's going to be first and ten for the Howard Bison at, the, at their own 36-yard line. But I think it was a situation where the, where the Hornets did have to go for it just outside of field goal range, and a punt is probably only going to be about a 15 to 20 yard field, uh, field position type of difference. So good decision, good pass, just off the hands of Malik Golson. Check that, it'll be first and 10 at their 31. As Greg McGee brings the offense in the back. see Darren Christie for the first time in the back, backfield along with Anthony Filiaw. They fake it, give it to Filiaw. He's checking at the 31. He's up over the 36, the 40. Finally out of bounds at the 41 yard line. It's going to be a pickup of 10 and a first down for the Bison. Anthony feel y'all showing great patience so far, picking his spots, a nice cutback as that play was originally a run to the left. Nothing was there, cut it back to the right, found some good yardage. A little bit of a delay right now. First and 10 for the Bison at the 41-yard line. There's seven minutes, 53 seconds here in the first quarter. There's no score here from Alumni Stadium. I wonder if there's a call on the field or something. It took a pretty long time for them to get the ball lined up. They did. McGee up under center, gives it off to Philia. Philia deeks a man at the 40, and he's up over the 46, 47 yard line for a pickup of about six. This isn't a good sign for the Hornets not really getting any type of penetration. And when they're doing, they're still missing the tackle kind of having an eerie resemblance to that Hampton game where they gave up over 200 yards rushing. Yeah, they're missing the tackle on the backfield. Next thing you know, he's up over the line of scrimmage and he's got five, six yards, and now it's second and an easy four. Fake the fill, y'all. Now McGee rolls off to his right. He's got pressure, throws it. He's got a man, and it's caught at the 45, and he's down at the 33-yard line. Nice pickup from Jonathan Booker. The Bison don't pass the ball a lot, but Jonathan Booker, when they do pass, is who they're going to look to. Leads the team in receptions and also yardage. You never saw his 26 catch so far this season. The five-game season so far in the Miat. Well, the Bison are throwing multiple offenses at the Hornets, and right now the defense just cannot come up with a good viable stop for them. McGee fades back, looks to his right. He's got Booker again in the right flat. Booker shakes one man, and he's out of bounds at about the 27-yard, make that, yes, 27-yard line. Going to be second down and about four. Pick up of about six. And they're deep into Delaware State territory. Phil Yaw in the backfield. They give it to him. He's up over the 25, and that's where he's going to be dropped, right at around a 24-yard line. Still y'all again on the run for the Bison, brought down by Scott. Also, Ernest, close. Ernest Ajay is back in the game. He was shooken up earlier, but I see him back in the game right now. It's going to be about third and less than a yard. Darren Christie is the up back. They give it to Phil Yaw. He's around the outside. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be close whether he got it. I don't think he got the first down. Phil Yaw is again tackled by the Hornets. I think he's going to be short. He may have even lost. Good tackle by Tarek Colston. Wrapping him up high, not allowing him to lean forward for any rushing yards. 
A lot of times with big running backs, you hit them in the legs and they lean forward for one or two yards. Good job tackling up high by the Hornets. So they did lose a yard, so it's going to be fourth and one. They're going for it again. They give it to Philia right up the middle. He's going to have the first down. He's up over the 20. He's going to be down to the 14-yard line. Check that, the 15-yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 inside the red zone for the Howard University Bison. Right now, Derek, the Hornets just don't have an answer for this offense that Howard is throwing at them. And it's because even though they're running heavy, they have mixed in some passing plays. So you can't really put eight people in a box because you don't know when a pass is coming. Well, Christie gets his first carry of the game, and he is down to the five-yard line. That's another pickup of about 10, and they're just ripping off six, seven-yard runs each time. It's going to be just short of 10 yards, second of one. Right there at the five. They give it to Christie again. He's hitting the backfield. He's going to be dropped for a loss of about three. They brought him down at about the eight-yard line. It's going to come up to about third and four. Really good tackle by Corey Barnes. He was off balance, but was still able to cut away the legs of Anthony Pilgrim in that tackle. Ball is marked at the seven. It's going to be third and about... Third and about two, with four minutes left here in the first quarter. Howard University moving left to right on your radio dial. And they give the ball back off to Phil Yaw. He's hit, and he is going to be brought down at about the five-yard line. It's going to be close again, whether they got the first down. Phil Yaw, the carry for Howard. It is a first down, so it's going to be first and goal at about the four and a half yard line for the Howard University Bison. They bring in a bigger package offense. There's Jimmy Johnson, Marvin Harris, and David Wilson, big tight ends, all check into the ball game. We got Darren Christie and Anthony Filia on the backfield, and we got a timeout on the Howard University Bison. When can we go to Byron? You want to do it on this timeout or you want to do it at the quarter? Huh? The next timeout? Okay, that'll be the quarter in four minutes. So. First to go on the four for the Bison. Back at it here at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. As a Howard University Bison have it first and goal at the four yard line, trying to punch this one in. Currently, right now, Greg McGee is up under center. He's got two, three backs in the backfield. Gives it off to Phil Yaw. Phil Yaw has hit at the five. He may have gotten at the five before he's met by a host of Hornets. He's going to be stopped right there. No game. We can't emphasize how big of a game this is for the Hornets. If they lose this game, they're basically out of the uh, MEAC Conference Championship contention. They're going 3-3 three and three here would be just huge blow to the Hornets' goals of winning the MEAC Championship. Well, McGee goes in motion to his left. He's got a man. Did he make the catch? He did make the catch. We have a touchdown. Howard University buys it. David Wilson in the back of the end zone. Wilson on the reception. Bison, David, 
So it's six nothing. Howard what University buys it on a what is this called? five yard a touchdown pass. Going with what is it called? A swinging gate? Some old school football here. It is a swinging gate. Now they move into position. John Fleck getting ready to kick the extra point. That touchdown pass was a nice pitch and catch as he caught Wilson in the corner of the back of the end zone. David Wilson had broke free and threw a nice pass. Kick is up. Kick is good. With two minutes and 53 seconds left in the first quarter, it's the Howard University Bison seven. The Delaware State University Hornets, zero. Not to start you one if you're a Hornet fan. Couldn't stop the run, couldn't get off, of, get off the field on third or fourth down in that possession. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, if you're the Hornets, you have to sustain a good possession. Delaware State was on the field for a very long time. And that's one of the keys of the game is control the time of possession. And you can see why. This is a very physical Howard defense. They're going to wear you out 60 minutes. So let's see if Corey Murphy and the group can get themselves composed, make a long drive of their own, and come away with some points. Yeah, Greg McGee is a very mobile quarterback. We've seen that. And he likes to roll out. And he's got the speed to get himself open. And he just waits for his receivers to break free and then just connects with them. And with a good running game with Christie and Filia in the backfield, they're just picking up five, six, seven yard chunks each time they're touching the football. So the Hornets are going to have to make some key stops coming up on their defensive side. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon here at Alumni Stadium. Well, Matt Jacobs gets ready to lay into it. He kicks it off. Eris Scott's going to field it at about the 8. He's got it up over the 15. Now he's running to the right. He's over the 20 and out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. So Eris Scott picks up 14 yards on the kickoff return. Delaware State University Hornets offense will start first and 10 from their 22-yard line. 14-yard return for the Hornets. First down, ball to the 23-yard line. Eric Scott breaks off left with Malik Golson and Robert King. Milton Williams is off to the right. Corey Murphy drops back. Day Hun Chung in the backfield. Fakes to Chung, throws it out to Golson. Who has it? Golson is hit at the 26 and driven out at the 27. Nice tackle there by Curtis Simmons. He's second and about four. Check that second and five. Two minutes and 39 seconds left here in the first quarter. And that's a good way to beat his own, especially if the corners are playing back. You've seen only two defensive backs on three receivers. Just throw it out, have your two receivers block the two backs, and you get a couple of good yards on that play. A stoppage on the field right now. The umpire moves up into the uh, into the huddle. And as the officials gather together, let you know that our today's officials, our referee is Anthony Purcell, umpire is Don Gray Johnson, linesman is Carl Logan, line judge is Michael Williams, side judge is Christopher Brown, field judge is Rick Warren, back judge is Jim Biddle. Play clock is Roddy Byers. Game clock is Walt Color Callaway. Observer is Jim Tucker. And the grader is Rusty Acri. Those are your officials for today's matchup. And after this possession, we'll tell you a slightly funny story of when we talked to the refs on the field <laughs> before the game. Yes, that was good. <laughs> Golson moves in motion. Murphy swings it out to Chung. And he just let him a little bit, but maybe it's a good thing he didn't make that catch because the Bison were all over that in the right flat. Yeah, they hung Chung probably would be laid out on the floor right now if he caught that pass. But to the story with the refs, they came in with these great big Miag leather jackets, walked out two hours before the game, and we thought they were the Hall of Famers that was going to be introduced at halftime. Thank goodness they were courteous enough to tell us that they weren't. 
I told them the next time that ever happens to just play it off and pretend like they're Hall of Fame receivers and everything like that. We had a good conversation with them. Well, this is a key third down for Delaware State. They need to convert this to give their defense a much needed break on the field. Murphy's got a man, throws it out. Era Scott, does he come in play? No, he does not. He caught the ball, but he was ruled out of bounds, and Era Scott is still on the ground. He has not given up. He has not gotten up. He's out of play on the Delaware sideline around the 48-yard line. He made a great attempt to make that yeah. catch, but could not stay in bounds. That was a good effort, but he took a hard fall trying to come down with it. You can't be mad of a player for not being able to convert a pass like that. Hopefully he just knocked the wind out of him. Maybe he landed on the football that caused him to. So Marco Cano drops back to punt the ball. He's back at his eight yard line. And Brandon Flanagan drops back to receive the punt at his 35. Low snap, Kano gets it off. It's a horrible punt. May have been but it takes a Delaware State bounce. It's finally downed at the 45 yard line. So the Bison will have a first and 10 at the Delaware State 45 yard line. Not what we wanted to have the Bison be able to do is start right off in Delaware State territory. So the defense is back at it. After being on the field for most of the first quarter. And with a minute and 50 seconds left, the Howard University Bison lead Delaware State seven to nothing. Greg McGee in the shotgun, swings it out to the left. That is caught by Jonathan Booker and he is out of bounds at about the 32 yard line. Pickup of about 12. You pick up or first down or disregard second and one from the 36. Three wide receivers to the right. They give it to Phil Yaw off over the left side. He's over to 35 and he's going to be brought down at the 32 yard line. There is a flag on the play. Delaware State had the football. Not sure where the football came out. Let's see, we're waiting on the call by the refs. There was a fumble on the play there, Derek, and Delaware State came away with it. The penalty was on the Bison, so Dell State gets a huge turnover break here, and they get the defense off the field, and they're going to be first and 10 at their own 32. Yeah, that was a huge turnover right there. Bison was getting close to red zone territory. You don't want to go down two scores, especially if you're the Hornets who don't have an explosive offense to get back into the game. This is a big possession. Let's see if they can capitalize on the Bison mistake. Well, Murphy pitches it out. He's got Dehun Chung over the 30. Down over the 36 yard line. Nice pickup for Chung. Disregard, that's Najee Jackson with a six yard pickup. Or five yard pickup, it's going to be second and five. Minute three and counting here in the first quarter, seven to nothing. Howard University leads the Hornets here at Alumni Stadium. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Now Golson moves in motion to the right. Murphy drops back, he's got pressure. He's gonna get hit, and he is gonna be brought Murphy's down the at the 34 yard line. It's gonna be about a loss of two. It's gonna bring up a third and long. Looked like he initially had time, but then when he tried to scramble out, 
Hit protection broke down and ended up getting sacked. Key, another key third down and long for the Hornets. Trying to get some sustainment offensively, keep their defense off the field. The Hornets have lacked creativity on the offensive side so far this game. The last time we covered them, they faced Norfolk, and we've seen a lot of Wildcats, screens, uh, empty backfield. Sometimes we've seen fullbacks in the backfield. We've seen a lot of different formations. Right now, we're getting a lot of just shotgun and maybe trips receivers to the right. They're getting a little predictable right now. Okay. All right. Well, at the end of the first quarter, it's the Howard University Bison 7, Delaware State University 0. They feature low dose radiation for Make sure you calm me down. Equipment with a high degree of clarity. So now we're going to go to Byron Dixon on the sideline. He has an update. We're back at Alumni Stadium at the end of the first quarter. The Hornet Bisons lead the Delaware State University Hornets 7 to nothing after a touchdown drive. The Hornets just recovered a fumble and hopefully can drive down the field to even up the score. As you've seen, there was an injury earlier to Honest Adaje. He is back on the field. It was cramped up. They taped him back up. He's back on the field. Eric Scott looks like he had the wind knocked out of him. It looks like he will return as well. And we'll send it back to you, Roland. Thanks, Byron, for those updates. It's good to see Ernest Ajay back out on the field. And hopefully Eric Scott will be out there as well. So now as Delaware State looks at a key third down and eight. And we're still waiting to resume here in the second quarter and get this game underway again. Howard University buys and lead Delaware State University Hornets seven nothing. So we third and long, as Delaware State comes up over the ball at their own 34. They need to get to the 42 to convert a very important first down. Okay, on Chung in the backfield along with Corey Murphy. He's got two wide receivers to the left and two to the right. Murphy drops back. He's got time. Looking, looking, looking. Still has time. Throws, throws a high and almost intercepted at the 40-yard line. Adam Ola, Ola Tunje. Had a chance to make the catch and it just went right through his hands at the 40th. Will Williams was open early on a comeback route when a play had broken down, but just didn't see him early enough and almost threw an interception. Good thing he threw it high. So Marco Cano drops back at his 20 to punt. And Brandon Flanagan is back at his. 29 yard line to receive. Kano gets a much better kickoff. That drives Flanagan all the way back inside of his 10. He's got it. The Hornets are down there. They get a nice hit and a nice tackle at the eight yard line. Flanagan. Looks like Gary Milton Jr. Good job by him hustling down the field and making a good open field tackle, pinning them back behind the 10 yard line. Great open field tackle on the special teams. And now, the Howard University Bison start on the right hash, first and 10 at the eight yard line. Defense needs a big stop here to get the offense back onto the field, see if they can get it going offensively and put some points on the board. Darren Christie is the lone setback. McGee looks, he's got a man that went right through the arms of Matthew Colvin. It's going to be in, incomplete, it'll be second and ten from the eight. Pass intended for Colvin is incomplete. They bring up second and ten for Howard. Buzz. Howard continues this hurry up offense. It's a non huddle. They get right back up into the line of scrimmage and get ready. They hand it off to Phil, uh, Christie. Christie is hit at the 10. He may have picked it up to the 11. Christie on the rush for Howard. Pick up about three. On the three Pick up a four, second and six, or third and six from the 12 yard line for the Bison. 
is one of the first times we're seeing them not in a short third and two or third and three. Good job by the Hornets. Now they can kind of not worry about the rushing game. Well, McGee drops back. He's got time, and he has a man over the middle caught and dropped at the 28-yard line. He found Clayton Gidron, and nice pitch and catch. Converts the third down, and now it's going to be first and 10 for the 29. And gives Howard some breathing space out of their own end zone. He drops back, looking to his left. Oh, oh okay. nice catch by Brandon Flanagan. It almost looked like yeah, the Alex linebacker was going to step out there and grab that one. Alex Perry was just a half second short from disrupting that pass and maybe coming up with an interception. And bring up another first down for Howard. The Hornets have struggled in their zone defense all season long. I'd rather see them just blitz and play some more man-to-man. -man. So they give the ball over to Christie. He's up over the 45, down to 46. Another pickup of about five. And, Christy you know, when they're running the ball, Howard. Derek, it's like five, six yards a clip is what they're getting rushing the football. Yeah, if I'm something. the Hornets, I want to bring some more people in the box. That was something you've seen Devon Moore do a lot to stop the run. But, of course, he's out with the torn ACL. That happened during practice a couple weeks ago. Rodney Tyson checks into the backfield for the first time. And now he goes in motion to the left. So you've got two wide receivers to the left, three to the right. Empty backfield for McGee, who drops back, looking right, feeling pressure, gets hit the 45, but stays on his feet up over the 50. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the Delaware McGee State 46 yard line. Hours. First and 10, Howard. And that's why you hate guarding a running quarterback. They had him, they had the rights there, and he just made a couple people miss and gets a first down. They had good pressure. So the drive continues for the Bison is first and 10 from the 46 yard line. Flanagan comes in motion to the left. They hand the ball off, and that is Tyson. Tyson hit at the 46, but he's going to be dropped down at about the 42 yard line. Pick up about three. Bolden in on the stop for Delaware State. It'll be second and six. Their center, Joshua Matthews, is limping a little bit. He'll stay in the game. He was uh, one of the players of the week for the offensive lineman last week. Flanagan goes in motion to the right. McGee drops back, he's got time. Now a little bit of pressure flushes off to the left. Ball is deflected by Ajay at the 40 yard line and falls harmlessly to the turf. McGee's pass is knocked down. McGee probably would have got the first down or close to it if he decided to take off and run. Had some green in front down. of him but decided to throw the ball. Good job by Ajay third getting down. his hand up and deflecting the pass. Key third down now for, the, for Howard. Darren Christie checks into the backfield. We've got three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. McGee in the shotgun formation, checking over the defense. Drops back, he's got time. Now he's got pressure. Chased by, oh, but he's gonna have close to the first down. He does have the first down. So he's run out of he bounds at the 32 yard he's line. He's run out of bounds by Bolden. I think the Hornets need to get up a put up a, of about ten. I think the Hornets need to put a quarterback spy out there on alert on third down, especially if it's a long third down like that. He's not really having any receivers to throw to. These receivers don't really get open that well. Only twenty five catches for the guy who leads them in receive in receiving uh, yards. So maybe put a spy out there on third downs to stop the quarterback from taking off. Well, McGee hands that ball off. Oh wow, Rodney Tyson. Ran in the back of his own man. I'm advertising the game right now. And then KJ just grabbed him and threw him to the turf. The ball came out late, but uh, he probably was down on the ground. That's what they're signaling. He's second and ten. KJ on that stop. Christie checks into the back there now. McGee drops back. He's got time. He looks. Ball is in and out of the hands of Jonathan Booker at the 20-yard line. That would have been good for a first down if he brings the pass in. Yeah, he threw that pretty low. Looks like Booker still was able to get his hand under it, but wasn't able to bring in a catch. 
So third and 10 from the 32 yard line of Delaware State. And right now, McGee drops back and he's got all the time in the world to survey the surroundings to see what he wants to do with the football. Well, it seems like they don't want to pressure him too much because he takes off and runs for about 10 yards. So you want to kind of just contain him in a pocket. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. The ball is intercepted at the 19 yard line by Delaware State University and Howard just shoots themselves in the foot. Looks like Ronald Robinson with a diving catch. And that's their seventh interception in five MIAC games. Good job by the Hornets with another turnover as Howard was marching down the field. Well, the defense got exactly what they needed, a key turnover, get themselves off the field. So let's see if this brings a little bit of life in the uh, Delaware State University the offense. First down at the 20 yard line. The Hornets will take over at the 20 yard line. If I'm the Hornets, I'll take a shot, see if I can get a big play here. We got Patrick Phillips in the backfield, probably giving some playoff time, and there he is, go for it. Oh. it is right through the hands of Milton Williams at the 35 yard line. He was open, the ball was there, and Milton Williams just dropped the football. That's the big shot I was asking for. Normally during a turnover, the defense may be a little uh, unconfident, a little upset, ran a play action, had man to man. Milton Williams has to bring that in. It was a little low, but it hit him in his hands. Exactly, a little low, but you got to make that catch. It looked like he was trying to take off before he caught the ball. Exactly, because <coughs> he had a step on the, on the corner and he would have been gone. So that'll bring in second and 10. Phillips still in the back. They hand the ball off to Andre Jackson. He's going to pick up a nice run, pick up of about eight. It's going to come up to a third and makeable two Sean, at the 28 yard line. And if I'm the Hornets, I have no problem taking another shot. Maybe not on this play, but they're playing a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, man to man against some of these good receivers we have here. I check that. That wasn't Najee Jackson. That was Lamar Shaw getting his first carry of the game. So give him eight yards. Maybe no Hornets. What do you do here? Third and short. I say I think you need to run the football right back up the middle again. Right, you got Patrick Phillips in the background, backfield. That's the fullback. Give it to Shaw and see what he can do. It's going to be close, but I think he's going to be short. They did do what I said they would. And I guess you were wrong. I think they should have threw the ball there. In hindsight, so I'm just joking with well, you. Well, it's but, uh, easy to say now. <laughs> this is a good stop by the Howard. And that's just unfortunate for a three and out after a big time interception. And they're losing this time of possession battle. You're bringing back the Hornet defense once again against another, a very physical offensive front and a Howard Bison. Yeah, the offense got to help the defense out. The defense goes out there and makes a key turnover to stop Howard. At least give him a first down, give him yeah. a break, give him something to look forward to. Talking about two straight turnovers that have led to zero points. Kano got the punt off, fielded at the 28. He's hit at the 30, brought down at the 35. A flag comes in, probably a block in the back on the receiving team as Flanagan brings it back for about seven yards. We'll check on the call on the flag to see what we got. Flag is on the far, on the Delaware State sideline, sitting there at about the 33 yard line. So Anthony Purcell gives us an explanation. We got an illegal block in the back, so that'll be a 10-yard penalty. They'll back them up another 10 yards. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bison at their own 23-yard line. As we sit here with nine minutes and eight seconds left in the first, or second, nine minutes, eight seconds left in the first half as the Howard University Bison lead Delaware State University Hornets seven nothing here at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. McGee's got two in the backfield, fake it to the up man. They give it to Phil, y'all. The ball is on the ground again. Let's see where this ball oh, ends man. up. And even though Delaware State is telling they got the football, they do have the football as a turnover at the 25 yard line. That's the third straight time that the Hornets have forced a turnover. And Anthony Pillar, great running back, but he's still a freshman. 
And that's the second straight time you see him put the ball on the ground. You know, Phil Yaw came through that hole sitting a little high, left the ball exposed, and the Hornets were in there, slapped at it, and the ball came right on out of there, and they got the good recovery. So, another key big turnover. Let's see if the Hornets can convert offensively. You got to come away with some points here. Your, your defense is playing terrific so far. So Murphy up under center, he fakes to Malcolm Williams and he throws it right into the hands of Cavano Idway. Murphy's pass is knocked out. It's by amazing Williams. it wasn't that intercepted by him. Rollins in on the play for Howard. That will bring up second and 10 from the 25. So second and 10 from the 25 on an ill-advised pass there by Corey Murphy. Three wide receivers to the left, Milton Williams to the right. He's got Malcolm Williams in the backfield. Gives it to Malcolm Williams, he's hit at the 25. He's gonna be brought down at the 20, or take that back at the 30, he's gonna be brought down at the 28, a loss of about three. And they're going backwards instead of forward, Derek. So it's going to be third and 13 from the 28 yard line. And you hate to see them squander this type of offensive opportunity to put points on the board. Murphy drops back. He's got time. He's got a man. It's Malik Golson. It's caught, and he is dropped at the two-yard line. What a catch from Malik Golson. And, and what a throw, because that takes some accuracy. The safety was there, threw it in the slot, and some toughness by Malik Golson going up. He knew he was going to get hit. Went up anyway and made a great catch. That's why they're one of the best receiving one-two duos in the entire conference. Murphy dropped it right Murphy over Golson's over right shoulder, and he turned, caught, got the hit gathered it in, and brought down at the two. What a huge oh, pickup for the Hornets. And Howard's been playing primarily man-to-man -man defense, so you gotta give these receivers some chances down the field. So Lamar Shaw and Najee Jackson in the back. Um, Delaware State's gonna call timeout here. They wanna make sure that they have this straight up with seven minutes and 37 seconds left in the first half will be first and goal from the two-yard line for the Delaware State University Hornets. As they trail the Howard University Bison seven to nothing. You know, that Malik Golson may be short in stature, but he's big in heart when it comes to making those catches over the middle. He's not afraid of anybody. And that's what you want out of your slot receivers with the way the, the games are called now. Slot receivers are almost unstoppable if they have that type of courage because you can't really hit an exposed receiver without getting a flag. You can't target a receiver without getting kicked out of the game. So they kind of have probably the biggest advantage out on the football field. So the interesting play calls here as they come back trying to put some points on the board here in the first half. They say a huge opportunity for the Delaware State University Hornets. And even though the running game hasn't been that great, you gotta, you gotta go and try to establish a physical presence for your team and try to score. Maybe not on the first run, but maybe the second run. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't get into the red zone in the first time. They go play action on second down and then try to run in the third down. Well, let's see what they do. They're back out of the timeout. They give it to Najee Jackson. He's up over the middle. Touchdown, Hornets. Najee Jackson with a two yard run right up the middle. And Delaware State University is on the board. And that's all caused because of the fumble earlier. Finally able to put some points on the board. Howard with three straight possessions of a turnover leads to seven points this time. Well, Mitchell Ward gets the team lined up to kick the extra point and get the conversion done. Try to tie this ball game here. Kick is up, and it is good. And we have a tie ball game here with seven minutes and 32 seconds left in the first half, where it's Howard University 7 and Delaware State University 7. 
was a huge scoring drive for the Hornets. The defense causing another turnover, doing what they need to do to stay in this football game. It was good to see the offense finally get on the board, convert some third downs, and put the points on the board. I.E. Boros drops back at about his seven yard line and received this kick from Mitchell Ward. Back there at his 10, waiting on it. See what Mitchell Ward does. He drives it into the ground. It bounces at the 35. Hey, Goro has it at the 25. He goes right up the middle, and he is untouched over at the 30. The 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He will score. Touchdown, Howard University buys it. As he ran to the back, untouched into the end zone. That's why I don't like squib kicks. Just kick it deep and let your coverage people take care of it. Squib kicks sometimes, it takes such weird bounces that your, your special team defense kind of lose containment. And that time it took a high bounce and then went right into the kick returner's hands and he went untouched in the middle for the touchdown. And once again, you see that swinging gate formation. Delaware State has everybody lined up, so now they'll just go for one. Yeah, by the time he picked up the ball, he was already over to the 35, and Delaware State's kick team hadn't even reached the 50 yet. Yeah, he I, was at full speed. I just don't understand the squib kicks. It's something I don't like unless it's very, very late in the game when you just kick it at a lineman. You let one of these guys catch it off the bounce, and it's just very easy for them to run up the middle like we saw on that play. Well, John Fleck boots the extra point. That'll put the Bison up 14 to 7 with 7 minutes and 26 seconds left in the first half. My boy Mike. That Mike Patterson. Well, Howard University comes right back after Delaware State has scored. They turn, kick the kickoff, run it 65 yards untouched for a touchdown. Well, Milton Williams and Malik Golson are dropping back to reserve this kick. Normally, Aaron Scott is back there with Golson, but uh, not yet. So we'll see how goals or how Scott is doing. I don't see him on the sidelines. to receive this kickoff. Kick is off. Malik Golson fields it at his one. He's coming right back up the middle with it. He's in at his 16. He's going to be brought down at the 19. So a kick return of about 18 yard line. The Delaware start will start first and 10 from their own 19. Von Hunt with the tackle. First attempt for the Hornets at their own 19. Dehan Chung in the backfield as Corey Murphy comes up over center. He's got three wide receivers to the left, Milton Williams to the right. Gives it off to Chung. Skirts off the left side, he's over the 20, hit at the 23 and down at the 24 yard line. Pick up of about five, so it'll be second and five for the Hornets at the 24 yard line. Seven on the carry for the Hornets. Seven minutes left here in the first half. 
Howard University leading Delaware State University 14 to 7. If you're the Hornets, you want to take up some time here. I know you're down, but you don't want Howard to get the ball back with uh, any amount of substantial time for them to make a drive and make it a two possession game before halftime. Murphy drops back. He's got time. He lurks. He's got it. Oh. Robert King had it right in his hands and dropped it at the 45 yard line. That would have been a huge pickup for the Hornets. I think he may have heard footsteps. He had a safety coming down on him, and he was like, I'm not getting hit. For who? He went Ricky Waters for us. For who? <laughs> for what? <laughs> Third down Big third down conversion here for the Hornets. Trying to keep possession of the ball and keep the bison off the field. Chung stays in the backfield. Now he spreads off to the right side. Delaware State moving left to right on your radio dial. Murphy drops back. He's got time. He's got Golson. He throws it high over Golson almost into the hands of Trayvon Hunt. So it'll be fourth and four, or fourth and five, and Delaware State will have the punt. And, and, and that's a terrible possession. Only about a 40 seconds off the clock. Now Howard has a chance to get the ball. They can still do, play, do anything in their game plan, which involves a lot of running, and have a chance to score a touchdown. You want to take some time off the clock. I know you want to score, but do you really want to put your defense in a bad situation here? The Hornets would have gotten the ball. The Hornets will still get the ball first in the second half. So it wasn't imperative for them to score on that drop. Kano gets the ball off. Flanagan lets it bounce at the 42, and it goes out of bounds right there. It's a penalty flag. Be a first and ten for the Bison at the 40-yard line. 35-yard punt. It's going to be first and ten for the Bison at their own 40. I think we're going to get a personal foul on one of these teams away from the ball. I see the flag sitting on Delaware State inside. Offense, number 14. The fourth of Defense, number 27. Penalty ball set. First down, Offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. The Hornets one for dodge the Hornets and one for the Bison. The Hornets dodge a bullet there. If it's just on them and a 15-yard penalty, they're up on their 50-yard line. So the penalties offset, and the Bison take over at their own 40. It'll be first and 10. McGee's got Philia on the backfield. He's up under center. As Jimmy Johnson goes in motion, he's going to throw to Johnson, and Johnson's going to be hit right at the 42 for a pickup of about two yards, so it'll be second and eight. I think it was Cameron Judge on a tackle. And the Hornets, I think, will probably prefer that the Howard is trying to throw the football on them. They have pretty good secondary, even without Devon Moore, very opportunistic. McGee rolls to his right. He's got some pressure, but he's got blocks as well. He's got a man that's going to be caught at the 50-yard line. Brandon Flanagan with a nice catch as he stayed in bounds at the 50-yard line. We're going to see if it's going to be enough for a first down. And good job by Greg McGee keeping his head up while he's running. And he just, he's killing the Hornets with his legs. He's just buying six, seven, eight extra seconds of time and no defense can cover for that long. And he got good blocks from his running backs, Phil Yaw and Sh uh, Christie in the backfield. They give it to Phil Yaw. He's going to have the first down. He's up over the 50. He's down at the 47 yard. Pickup of about three is going to be first and 10 from the Delaware State 47. Phil Yaw already with two fumbles. You want to know if you're a little cautious of giving him a football right now in a situation where you have a chance of going up two scores. They swing it out to Brandon Flanagan, and he just fired it right over his head. Greg McGee had him wide open. He just threw it it's over his head. It'll be second and 10 at the 47. And, and Greg McGee has struggled well, with his accuracy at times so far this game. It's really just been his running ability that's been hurting the Hornets. 
Yeah, McGee rolls out of that pocket, and it seems like he's got all day to just survey the grounds, and he just finds a man. If he doesn't, he's running. We have motion on number 71. Look, he pulled up early. Yeah, we got a legal procedure. It looks like 71, the left tackle, John Smith. And going back to Greg McGee, he seems better at throwing the football when he's out of the pocket. In the pocket, he's throwing an interception, throwing some passes over people's heads, but when he takes off and scrambles is when he's hurting them both in a running game and a passing game. So, he's second and 15. Second down 15 for the Bison. From the Bison's own 47 yard line. He drops back, he's got Phil Yaw in the backfield. He's got Flanagan moving in motion to his left. He's got time, he's got a man, that's Flanagan at the 50, and he's gonna be brought down at about the 47 yard line. Pick up of about, eh, Five yard line. And that's five a, yards. It's going to be third and nine. That's a great open field tackle by senior corner Joe Boyd. One of the preseason all be at corners. Four minutes, 50 seconds left in the second half or first half. Key third down conversion here for both teams. So Hornets want to get the Bison's offense off the field. Field and the Bison would love to put another score up before the first half is done. McGee drops back at his 45. He's got time. Now he's got a man. It's tipped in the air and dropped. Look like Cameron Judge jumped Cameron in front of that. Judge. And McGee's struggling in the pocket. He has not been able to beat the Hornets with his arm. It's just when he takes off, the defense kind of breaks down. You got to keep him in the pocket. That's why they're not really blitzing him that much. Make him beat you. Throwing against seven or eight defensive backs. Well, Malik Golson has dropped back at his 10 yard line, so he has definitely taken over the punting, punt receiving duties. Nice punt. That's going to go over, and he's going to let it bounce, and it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So John Fleck with a 48 yard punt. As it sails into the end zone. And that was a good de defensive hold. You don't want to go down two scores. The Hornets only averaged 12 points on a season. So we're already at the brink of productivity for the Hornets offensively. So, ball's at the center of the 20. Delaware State moving left to right on the radio dial. It's first and 10. Golson moves in motion. They give fake it to him, and now Murphy right up the middle, up over the 25, and he is down at the 29. Nice nine-yard run by Murphy. He'll be, bring up second and one. And good job keeping the football. It looked like it was going to be a loss of a couple if he gave that football to uh, Malcolm Williams. First down, Horace. Check that. They gave him enough. Give them 10, so it'll be first and 10 from the 30. Ball is marked at the left hash. Murphy up under center. He's got Malcolm Williams in the backfield. Throws it over. He catches made at the 40, and he's going to be brought down at the 42 yard line. Bo Saravolo with his first catch of the day and a pickup of 12. And he, he's gotten open a couple of times. I want to look at, if I'm, if I'm Corey Murphy, I'm looking his way a little bit more. The Hornets have three, four good, reliable receivers. It's not just Williams and Golson who they can throw the ball to. Three minutes, 20 seconds and counting. They give it to Malcolm Williams on the run. He's up over the 45, down to the 47. He's pick up of about four. It's going to be second and six from the 47. And I really like that play call by Arrington Jones. You don't want to get too pass happy here where the defensive ends can just rush the passer relentlessly, especially with this offensive line. They've given up 19 sacks. Even though you're, going, you're in kind of a hurry-up mode, you don't want to just be one-dimensional here. Two wide receivers to the left, to the right. Murphy drops and hits Milton Williams, and he breaks free at the 30. He's down at the 23-yard line. He could not keep his feet. Milton Williams had broken free, made a great catch, and they just got tripped up at the 22-yard line. Looks like he got to the 15 when he got tripped up. He was able to get a little bit more yards. And that was a good slant route. 
It was a great route, nice pitch and catch. First and 10 from the 15 at the left hash. Lamar Shaw checks into the backfield. He'll be the up back with Malcolm Williams behind him. Murphy up under center. They give it to Malcolm Williams. He's got five yards as he's brought down at about the 10-yard line. It'll be second and five from the 10. Two minutes and 18 seconds and counting. Williams on the carry. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Second down and six. Second and six from the 11. Ball is marked on the left hash. Hornets go with two backs, Lamar Shaw and Malcolm Williams. Bo Cerevalo is flanked out to the right. We got movement in the interior line. Let's see what happened here. The horn is signaling it that it's against the bison. We may have a neutral zone infraction. Could be encroachment on the defense. That's what Delaware State's saying. Let's see what we got. It is offsides. This is huge because now it brings up instead of a second and six, a second and one. Ball is marked out the six yard line. Malcolm Williams alone set back. Murphy, get, he's rolling to his right. He throws to his big tight end. So that's brought in from Gabe Sherrod and he's gonna be brought down at about two yard line. So it'll be first and goal. Check that at the three yard line. Tackle by Rollins. With a minute 40 left here in the first half. And Delaware State first trailing by seven. Ball on the three yard line, first and goal. It's a key drive for the Hornets. Last time they were down here, they handed it off to Jamal Jackson for the touchdown. They have some big running backs with him, Dehan Chung. A couple well, got, big guys who can. Well, they got Najee Jackson in, uh, as the up back and Lamar Shaw. And they're going to give it to Shaw, and he's going to run right up the middle. Still driving, still on his feet. Touchdown, Hornets. Shaw on the carry. Touchdown, Hornets. Lamar Shaw with a three-yard touchdown run right up the middle as he hit the pile, and the pile just kept driving, and he ended up in the end zone there. And that's a good job moving his feet, and also a good job by the offensive line. I remember a few years ago, you weren't allowed to push a guy into the end zone. I'm glad they changed the rule. Mitchell Ward getting ready to try to tie this ball game up here with a minute six left here in the first half. <coughs> remember that crazy uh, Notre Dame game versus USC? And the uh, extra point is no Ooh, good. Oh, he missed no it. Good. Our score was 106 left in the first Wow, in half critical time. extra point is fail. Howard 14, Delaware State 13. So Howard University leads 14 to 13 with a minute six left here in the first half. And let's hope this extra point fail doesn't come back to haunt them. I, just don't, and I think that's Mitchell Ward's first miss point after touchdown field goal attempt. Hey, ladies and ladies and uh, it could have come at a worse time right now. Health insurance sponsor for DSU Athletics. Well, right now, Delaware State is taking all the punches Howard is throwing at them, and they're counter-punching quite nicely. So, as Derek mentioned earlier, Delaware State will get the football to start the second half. So, it'll be interesting how they play this, this kickoff right now on whether they're going to kick the ball directly into Rodney Tyson. I doubt if they want him fielding the ball at a dead sprint at the 35 again. If I'm Mitchell Ward, I'm just kicking this as hard as I can. The squib kicks, just, you know, they're just taking pretty good bounces if you're a Howard Bison returner. They're bouncing right into your hands. You're not fumbling around or anything. Mitchell Ward getting ready to put the foot to it. Get, drives Rodney Tyson back and the ball's going to go out of the end zone 
and so it'll be first and 10 at the 20. And this just makes you scratch your head when you see something as the kicker drives it out of the end zone and then he turns around and he, before he kicks one to the 35 and they run him in. So. Well, I, I'm glad that he did kick it far and out into the end zone. I don't like squib kicks that much unless you just hit a lineman with it when it's 10 seconds left in the game and try to tell him to return it 50, 40 yards for a touchdown. Well, the Bison take over, first and 10 at their own 25. And they got Phil Yar in the backfield, as well as Christy. Christy is the up back. McGee rolling to his right, gives it over to Phil Yar. Phil Yar cuts it right up the middle. And he's up over the 30 yard line. They're saying a ball came out, but line's, line judge is blowing it dead at the 37. And even though he was down, he needs to protect the football better. He's just putting the football all, all down, around the ground so far. Nice pitch and catch out to <coughs> Richard Ayagoro. Converts I'm the first down. I'm surprised Howard is throwing here with a one-point lead. I think he would just try to first go into down, the second Howard. half. They have three turnovers, and... They've, McGee has looked inaccurate at times in the pocket, almost threw a second interception just his last possession ago. Well, it's first and 10 at the 43. He drops back. He's got time. Now he's getting a little pressure. Up over the 45, he's hit at the 50 and down at around the 48-yard line. It's going to be short. They're running up to the football to try to convert here again. 25 seconds and counting. Now the clock has stopped at 23. Also, you wonder how far do, does Howard have to go to kick a field goal? They've been in the red zone a couple of times and went for it. How good is their special teams kicker? They've had a couple misses in the last couple of weeks, missed a point after a couple of weeks ago as well. So it's going to be second and one at the 48. The Bison. One time out left and 23 seconds left in the play. So they need to get about another 20, 25 yards to put them reasonably in the field goal position. Ball spotted at the right hash. The Bison are moving right to left on your radio dial. So McGee's got Phil Yaw in the backfield with him. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. We had movement on the right, yes. Richard Iagoro started off before the gun went off, and uh, it's going to be a legal procedure. Wide receiver went into a dead sprint, but the ball never moved. So second and six. 23 seconds left here in the first half with Howard University leading Delaware State 14 to 13. McGee has Phil Yaw in the backfield. He fakes it to Phil Yaw, drops back. He's got a man. It's tipped right before it was going to go into him. And Joe Boyd broke it up at about the 31 yard line. And once again, he, in the pocket, he's just not making the right reads. Zone coverage is what I would go to, so you have all eyes on the quarterback. You can kind of just read them and try to jump one of these passes and hopefully return it to the house to take the lead. 18 seconds left here in the first half. The third and six. McGee drops back. He's got a little bit of pressure. Now he's going to run to the outside. He's going to pick up the McGee first down as he runs out of bounds at about the 46-yard line of the Hornets. Check that, the 45. Anthony Filio put a great block on one of our Hornets. I think it was uh, Willie, Willie Bolden who got laid out on that play. That's something that the league, the NFL and college is trying to take away from the game. No call on that one. Well, this is probably going to be the last play in the first half as McGee is scrambling out. He's going to be hit at the 46-yard line. And sure enough, as time expires here in the first half, and I think they just up wanted up to about three yard line. 
to three yards. And that's the end of the half, ladies and gentlemen. Brings Our it score. down to the 41 yards. 14, Delaware State 13. Well, hold on now. The officials are gathering about the 42-yard line. If I, the side judge came in there indicating that there was two seconds left in the first half and that the Bison had called a timeout. So, they're going to bring John Fleck in. The ball's going to be spotted at about the 46. Well, the ball is spotted at the 42. That means the spot of the kick will be around the 49. This is going to make a 59-yard field goal attempt by John Fleck. If I'm the Hornets, I'm in some type of field goal return here. I don't know if he has the leg to get it across past the end zone, so maybe you could try to return it here for a touchdown. Well, the Bison have called their last timeout, 14-13 here in the first half. Two seconds left, and we're going to see a booming field goal attempt here by John Fleck of the Bison. If you How are University horn. Bison, their uniforms look similar to our National Football League's Buffalo Bills. They're dressed in their road whites with blue numbers and red outlines. White helmets and the jumping bull or bison on the side of their helmets. Face masks are blue. The horn is having three people back near the 10 yard line just in case if it's type, some type of fake. I'm kind of confused about this play call here. Kind of confused about this whole drive of why they didn't just take the lead and into the halftime break. Well, Richard Iagaro is the holder, and he's got some speed, so we want him to check that fake. Kick is up, and it is short and to the left. It almost looked he put like some it was. Distance yeah, to I him. thought it was good. I was going to be very surprised if that went through the uprights. So, we're at the end of the first half with the Howard University Bison lead Delaware State University 14 to 13. And when we come back, Byron will have some input on the first half. And we'll check on some of the injury updates that we have before we come back. We'll also have the band here. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field. Last evening, Delaware State University held its 13th annual Athletic Hall of Fame banquet and induction ceremony at the Martin Luther King Student Center. Seven former Hornet athletes and a coach, along with two championship teams, were honored during the ceremony. Please join Dr. Harry L. Williams and the Delaware State University family as we honor our Hall of Fame Class of 2013. This Hall of Fame is the MEAC's all-time softball home run leader and a three-time All-MEAC selection. So, so show your love for Katrina Ansbach. This Hall of Famer was an All-MEAC football selection and Division I AA Academic All-American. Make some noise for Stanley Burris. Our next Hall of Famer coach led the Hornets to the 2007 MEAC Football Championship and first appearance in the national playoff. Put your hands together for Coach Al Lavin. This Hall of Famer is Delaware State's career baseball leader in home runs, RBI, and doubles. 
It was a three-time All-MEAC selection. Give it up for Scott Martin. This Hall of Famer is the Hornets' all-time leader in receptions and receiving yards and ranks in the top five in the MEAC for each category. Show your love for Shahir McBride. Our next Hall of Famer graduated from DSU as the school's number five all-time men's basketball scorer with 1,485 points. Make lots of noise for Paul Newman. Our next Hall of Famer was a baseball and football standout for the Hornets back in the 1970s, not so long ago. In 1970, he led all Division II players in batting Put your hands together for Pedro Swan. And this Hall of Famer was a Hornet defensive standout in the late 1960s. He was Delaware State's defensive back of the year and ranked among the school's all-time interception leaders. Put your hands together for Dwight Williams. We also at this time want to recognize two, our two championship teams, the 1956 Delaware State football team was 7-1-1 one, and, one, and captured a share of the CIAA championship for the first time in school history. The Hornets outscored their opponents, their opponents that is, 235-52 to 52 that season. Let's hear it for the football team. And the 1962 Delaware State baseball team also shared a CIAA title for the first team in school history. The Hornets were 10 and 3 that season and 7 and 2 in the CIAA. Let's hear it for our baseball team. We ask all of our Hall of Famers to please rise and be recognized by our audience today. Let's hear it for our Hall of Famers. Once again, let's hear it for our Hall of Fame team. Thank you for your attention. is all the way from Willingboro, New Jersey. Please show your love for Mr. Aaron Too Cool Valentine. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's halftime entertainment. It's that mighty, mighty band from Hornetland, the Delaware State University marching band. Today's show is dedicated to the greatest gift on our planet. This show is a tribute to all the ladies. With special selections from Jennifer Lopez, Tony Braxton, Cher, Cool in the Game, Lil' Kim, Beyonce, and Janelle Monet. Ladies, this show is for you. <laughs> It's the fire in your eyes, the flash of your teeth, My check, one, the two. swing in your waist, and the joy in your feet. Ladies, phenomenally phenomenal. You are all phenomenal women. Give yourselves a round of applause, ladies.
as the storm breaks it down, the Sweet 16 will dazzle you with their silky sweet moves to Tony Braxton's classic hit under the direction of Mr. Randolph J. Johnson, Unbreak My Heart. Pretty women wonder where your secret lies. You might not be cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when you start to tell them, they think you're telling lies. You say, it's the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride in my step, and the curls of my lips. Ladies, phenomenally phenomenal. You are all phenomenal women. The Sweet 16 is under the guidance of Mr. James Jones. The Sweet Sixteen. Get your cameras ready because it's picture time. It's time for those leg popping, jaw dropping ladies of dance known as delegates to perform to Cher's new hit, Woman's World. It's the click of your heels, the bend of your hair, the palm in your hand, and the need for your care. Ladies, phenomenally phenomenal, you are all phenomenal women. Delegates is under the supervision of Miss Tamika Hudson. Delegates. Oh yeah, it's that super hype band from Hornetland, the Delaware State University Marching Band. The Storm Center is forecasting some female favorites from Cool in the Game, Lil' Kim, Beyonce, and Janelle Monet. Ladies, this is for you. To all the ladies in the house today, Stand to your feet. Get your dance on if you want to. Sing along if you want to. Today, it's all about you. From the approaching storm to you, ladies, we love you. Let's get the party rocking.
No matter, ladies. You know you got it going on. Lady MC, give him some. Can't speak the strong, can't hold yourself alone. Ladies in the bed, you will never go wrong. Brains and beauties, we don't need no men. Ladies, where you at? Raise your hands and say, let's go. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Give him a little something, something. Sashay. Run this. Come on. Is it the ladies? Who run this world? Who run this world? Who run the world? Who run this world? Work it out, ladies. Oh, yeah. Let's get a little tightrope going. Come on, Ben. Uh, uh. Some people talk about you like they know all about you. When you get down, they doubt you. And when you're tipping on the scene, yeah, they talking about you. Because they be tipping on the scene when they talk about you. Whether you're high or low, approaching storm, let them know. you got to walk the tightrope, baby. Show We're back here at Alumni Stadium. It is halftime. Your Delaware State University Hornets trail the Hornet, the Howard Bisons, 14 to 13. I'm here with a very special guest, and I'll let him introduce yourself. Good evening, fans. How are you? My name is Paul Newman, Delaware State basketball. All right, Mr. Newman, it's good to see you here. Can you just describe how this Hall of Fame weekend was for you? The Hall of Fame weekend was great. You know, a lot of people came back and supported me. Talked about a good, you know, a few laughs, a few jokes from back in the day. And it was great to see all the guys and be honored under Delaware State. Being a Delaware State University graduate, what do you think about the changes that have happened on this campus so far? Well, I was here back in the 80s, so definitely it's a big change. And I, I think it's growth in the uh, college and the university. Of course, it was Delaware State College, now it's university, so that's a plus for me. Quick question about athletics. What do you think about our football as well as our basketball teams this upcoming season? Well, the football team looks strong, doesn't follow them as much. But as the basketball team, Coach Jackson is doing a great job. The team should be a good powerhouse, and as an alumni of basketball, I look forward to coming back and supporting them. What's next for you, Mr. Newman? I'm sure everybody would like to know. Well, me back in Philadelphia, I'm just looking to help out young kids, teach them the game of basketball the way it is, and just move forward that way because that's what it all is about right now, giving back. Thank you for your time, Mr. Newman. We're back. Get ready for the second half. We're rolling. Coming up next. Thank you.
to experience the thrill of the game and the joys of winning. With games like Powerball, Mega Millions. Well, I'm rolling the breeze, and we're back here, getting ready to start the second half here at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. And uh, Byron Dixon just finished up with a great interview with one of our Hall of Fame guests, Paul Newman, down there on the sidelines. But now Derek's going to cover our first half stats. Derek, what do we got? Well, right now, the Hornets, we had the three keys of the game. One was to run the ball effectively. The Hornets only 23 yards rushing, but they do have two rushing touchdowns. They still need to establish more of a running game besides in the red zone. Also, turnovers. They forced three turnovers, zero turnovers for them, so they're limiting turnovers. Also, um, they've done a good job with time of possession, but they're losing to the Bison in time of possession by five minutes. They do have 51 plays ran. and uh, I'm sorry, that was the, the Bison has 51 plays ran, which is not good if you're one of the Hornets because they're so, so physical. Everything is rushing the ball, and you got to give these guys some breaks on, on defense. The time of possession, they're down five minutes in that category. they got to do a better job of converting on the third downs to keep their drives alive. They're only one for six on third downs. And that's the reason why they're losing the time of possession battle. Well, we're getting ready to start the second half. The band is off the field, marching all over to the stands so they get ready to kick this ball off. On our 30 seconds before kickoff, Delaware State will receive the football here to start the second half and they trail the Howard University Bison 14 to 13, a critical missed extra point here at the end of the second score for Delaware State. We're hoping it doesn't come back to haunt them here as they start to resume play here at Alumni Stadium. Both teams have left points on the board so far. You look at the Hornets forcing three turnovers but only coming away with one touchdown. And you look at also with uh, the Bison turning the ball over near the red zone. So both teams have a lot to improve on. We expect it to be a close game. It always is against these two rivals. And this will be a good second half of football. We're hoping to be. We still haven't gotten confirmed word on Eris Scott. He left in the first half after trying to make a spectacular catch on the sidelines. Well, the ball is underway. And it's going to come down to Malik Golson at the one. He's coming out with it. He's up over the 15, hit at the 19. He's going to be driven out of bounds by Darren Christie. So it'll be first and 10, just a little right at the 20-yard line. So first and 10 at 20. Delaware State's moving left to right on your radio dial. And the ball is set on the far right hash. Pretty important for Delaware State to get the second half moving. because so far the Hornets, other than the turnovers, have not been able to stop the Bison. Corey Murphy up under center. He's got Dayon Chung in the backfield. He gives it to Chung. Chung over the 20, he's hit at the 21, and that's where he's gonna be stopped. Pick up of about one, it's gonna be second and nine. Here starting this second half. Second and nine for Delaware State. Second and nine for the Hornets. Chung in the backfield again with Lamar Shaw back there. Corey Murphy up under center with two wide receivers to the right. They give it to Chung again over the 25. Nice pickup. He picks up about eight. It's going to bring up about third and one as he is, or take, check that third and two at the 28 yard line. He brings it up to the 28 yard line where it's third and two for the Hornets. Key early third down conversion for the Hornets. Try to convert, keep this drive alive. Malik Olsen headed to the sideline, so I would expect it to be more of a running play on third and two. They got Lamar Shaw as the up back in front of Dehan Chung. They give it to Chung. Chung is hitting the backfield at the 25, and he's not going anywhere. It's going to bring up a fourth and five, and the Hornets are going to have to punt the football. I like the idea of running the ball, but they made it look too predictable on that formation. When one of your best receivers walks off onto the sideline, you're kind of signaling to the defense that you're looking to run the ball on that play. 
We just got word from Byron Dixon that Aaron Scott is out for the rest of the game, so he will not return for the, today's matchup. Marco Cano drops back at his 10 to punt the ball. Flanagan back at his 40 to receive. A nice booming high kick drives Flanagan back to the 26. He's got it. Hit at the 26 and dropped at the 26. Nachi Jackson down there on the special teams with a nice open field tackle. The special team coverage of the Hornets has been pretty good except that one touchdown. That more came off of the squib kick idea that we, neither of us really like. But they've done a good job in coverage, especially on punts. 12 minutes, 54 seconds left here in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Bison. They'll start off at their 26-yard line at the right hash, moving right to left on your radio dial. Greg McGee in the backfield. He's got Phil Yaw behind him. He gives it to Phil Yaw. Up over the 25, hit at the 25, dropped at the 26. I don't think he got maybe maybe a yard. For the exception of the first two possessions, Delaware State's done a very good job against the running game. And Anthony Phil Yaw isn't really running with the same conviction he was earlier with two fumbles on his mind. He's kind of just protecting the ball and running a lot slower. Second and 10 for the Bison. They give it to Bill Yard again. He's hit at the 25 and again down at the 26. That's going to bring up third and long. And if this, this is what you, if you want, if you're the Hornets, make the quarterback beat you. He's thrown some pretty bad passes right into the, the Hornets' hands. One of them coming away with an interception. A couple of them dropped. You want him to try to, if anybody beats you, you want it to be this guy. You want to see if he can actually beat you without his legs and having to actually make a throw on these third downs. Third and long, three wide receivers to the left, one to the right, Phil Yaw into the backfield behind McGee. Low snap, but he's got it. Now he's scrambling, he's gonna run with it. He's up over the 30. Is he gonna get enough for the first down? He is. He scrambled enough, got it up over the 36 yard line, and it's gonna be first and 10 for the Bison. You gotta tackle those guys high. You never really wanna tackle someone low in a situation well, like that. Allows them to lean forward and get an extra yard or two. Gives it off to Phil Yard. He's hit at the 36, up over the 40. He's gonna be brought down at the 46 yard line. A little bit short of the first down. It's gonna be second and less than a one. When an Anthony Phil Yard runs at you at 210, then you can tackle somebody low. That's a, that's a good time to tackle somebody low, but. He gives it to Phil Yard again. He's up over the 50, down to the Delaware State 48-yard line. Pickup of about seven. It's going to be first and 10 for the Bison. Howard's starting to pick up the pace here on offense, and we have a man down for the Hornets. And Shabazz Gordon is down at the 48, and he is not getting up. He's sitting up, but he's not getting up. Maybe a cramp or... Maybe some sportsmanship here as the Hornet, I mean, the Howard was kind of getting up and down the field. You tell somebody, hey, fall down, fall down and make him slow down here. Let's hope that's not the case. He's up on his feet now and gingerly moving off the field. It looks more like the cramp yeah, than anything more like else. A cramp. As Shabazz Gordon gets off the field under his own power. L.B. Williams checks into the game. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bison at the 48 yard line of Delaware State. 10 minutes and 57 seconds left here in the third quarter. And so far the Howard University Bison have got a very nice looking drive started here. They started off at their 10 and they have moved it into Delaware State territory as McGee rolls off to his left, gets it out his receiver, which is Jonathan Booker, but he's dropped right at his 45-yard line after a pickup of three will be second and seven. The Hornets secondary do a really good job of making tackles in the open field. Terry Colston with another good one. One of the preseason All-Americans that this defense has. I mean, all of them. Joe Boyd, Terry Colston, uh, Cameron Judge, they all do a good job tackling. 
Ball out to Booker again, in and out of his hands as he was hit at the 41. Ball drops incomplete. It's going to bring up third and seven. Good job by Ronald Robinson with some good closing speed, making it uncomfortable for him to make the catch. It looked like Jonathan Booker, like he said, was the one who he was looking to. So it's Aya Gore and Flanagan to the right, Booker to the left. Clayton Gidron also out to the right. Phil you on the backfield behind McGee. McGee in the shotgun, drops back. He's got time as he has all day. He's got Booker breaking loose. Oh, and what a great recovery by Ronald Robinson as he knocked the ball away at the four yard line. And, and Greg McGee needs to lead Jonathan Booker. He underthrew him and allowed Robinson to make a great play on the football, but if he throws that in front, that's, that's six points right there. You got that right, Derek. He was open, he had to step on Robinson and just allowed Robinson to recover there and make a nice defensive play to bring up fourth and seven from the 45. John Fleck back to punt. He runs off to the right. Now he's going to drive the ball. We have a flag, or do we? No. Ball was punted out of bounds. Side judge is marching up the far sideline. He's still walking, and he's going to stop at the 13-yard line of Delaware State. At the 13-yard line, Horace will take over first and 10. Not the best punt. Normally, you want to pin them inside the 10. 13 isn't that bad, though. You'll take it if you're the Howard Bison. Yep, they'll take anything inside the 20 is what you want to look for. And they got it done, so it'll be first and 10 for the, at the 13 for the Delaware State Hornets. Najee Jackson checks into the backfield along with Corey Murphy, who's got three wide receivers to the left, one to the right, which is Milton Williams. They fake it to Golson in motion. Murphy right back up to it. And he's going to pick up about up over the 16, so he's going to pick up three. He's going to bring up second and seven for the Hornets. That's his first time we've seen some type of action like that, making you respect the reverse on a backside with Golson. To get a modest gain of three. Saravolo and King to the left, Milton Williams to the right. Murphy drops back, fakes to Jackson. Now he's throwing it up to Milton Williams, who just couldn't couldn't break free as Adamola had great coverage and had the inside position on Milton Williams. Be third and seven from the 16. Hornets break out with an empty backfield with three wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Murphy in the shotgun. He drops back, looking left, still looking. Little bit of pressure. Now he's got some time. Now he's going to run it. Does he have enough for the first? It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. It's going to be a first down for the Hornets at the 25 yard line as Corey Murphy made a nice scramble and picked up eight. And Corey Murphy showing that McGee isn't the only one who can run the football right now. He's made a few plays in the last couple possessions with his legs. First and 10 from the 24. Giving them a little breathing space. They give it to Najee Jackson who's hit. No, it's a fake. It was a fake. Good call there. Good catch, Derek. It's Corey Murphy on the keeper. Picked up about three. It's going to bring up around seven. Second. Second and five. And I really like the play call here. Adds another dimension to the running game where you can have your quarterback get four or five on a, on a quarterback keep off the option. Second and five for the Hornets at their 29-yard line. We still haven't seen the Wildcat or anything that we saw a couple weeks ago with um, with Williams in the backfield. Well, they give it to Dayon Chung, who skirts the outside. He's over the 30, up over the 35, and finally brought down at the 38-yard line. Pickup of about eight. Dayon Chung has run the ball very well all season long. He was the replacement when Malcolm Williams went down with that turf toe. Has great, probably the fastest back out of the backfield that we've seen so far. Of course, Malcolm Williams 
not in the best shape that he would like to be due to the injury. Well, let's hold off. We got. Well, they pick up the first down, but they have a dead ball foul, which is unsportsmanlike conduct on number four, Malik Golson. They're just going to march him back 15. It'd still be a first down, but it's going to make it a first down and 25. Malik Golson getting a little bit of <laughs> coaching up on the sidelines. Not what you want right now. When you're down, you're trying to move the ball. You can't have penalties like that. Disregard is going to be first and 10 for the Hornets back at their 20. Murphy over the middle. He's got Dayon Chung who picks up a first down. Nice 12-yard pickup. He's dropped at the 37-yard line. Tabrian Resby with the tackle. Tabron Resby. I take check that. Ball sitting at the 36 and a half. First and 10 for the Hornets. Dehan Chung in the backfield behind Murphy. They give it a, nope, fake. The, they're getting me each time on this fake up the middle there, Derek. <laughs> and Corey Murphy's doing a good job of knowing when to hand off and when to keep it. And he's doing an even better job getting down before he takes any contact. You don't want him getting hurt on these type of plays. Doing too much. Get as much as you can and then fall down and don't take one of these hits from these linebackers. You know, in the first half, the Bison were picking up five, six yards of carry on the rush, and now Delaware State seems to be kicking it off here in the second half, yeah. picking up nice yards on the rushing attempts. The Hornets must know they're 3-0 when they outrun their opponents, and that's what they need to do, get some more rushing yards and have some balance to this offense. Well, King comes in motion. Murphy fakes it to him, and he's running the football again for another eight yards, and he's up at midfield, where it's going to be first and ten for the Hornets. Wholesale changes for the Bison. They bring in some new interior defensive linemen into Tovon Sheets come in, 